verse starts out, since I met the blessed Savior. Who would raise your hand and tell me when it was that you received Christ, when you met the blessed Savior? Brother Mike, 1983, and he's been saved a long time. When did you get saved? Mrs. Winkler, 1993. There you go. All right, good. Brother Rich, 6363. Thank God for that. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Miss Kelly. 1973. We got it going here. We got 73, 83, 93. Are you 63? We're gonna so we're stopping right there because we're gonna mess it up. All right. Let's sing this second verse, right? Here we go. Since I met this blessed Savior. Let's go there. We'll just sing one verse of this, number 17 in the book. Glad that you're here tonight. Feels like winter out there, right? And uh, a little warmer today. Jesus will outshine them all. Number 17. We'll just sing the first verse. Oh, what glory awaits me in heaven's bright city when I get there. Such sights I'll behold. A million scenes of rare beauty will demand that I view them. Still, Jesus will outshine them all. Mansions will glisten on the hills of glory. Happy. myself in trouble. Number 30, we shall behold him. How many of you know this song? All right. And I didn't sing this kind of like it's written in the hymn book. I've heard other people say, raise your hand if, you, if, you've, if you've heard this song before. We shall behold him. All right. And then the younger generation has not. Uh, Miss Rebecca earlier, I'm like, you know that. She's like, I've never heard that song in my life. And uh, I asked my son, Michael, he's like, I've never heard this song in my life. But uh, it's a great old song. And again, I'll probably stumble through it. You stumble through with me. But uh, yeah, I like this one. I saw it. I thought, we're going to sing this, all right? And again, I, I learned it a little differently. But I'll try to follow Miss Angela here on the piano. All right, here we go. The sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance. Shine. 
to me. How many say I still don't know it? All right, there you go. We'll sing it one more time. Let's try it one more time. All right. The skies shall unfold, preparing his entrance. The stars shall applaud him with thunders of praise. The sweet light in his Maybe that's a song you haven't sung in a while. Let's do this one, 23. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. We'll sing the chorus, first verse, and then the chorus. All right, we'll get into praying in a minute. Glad to see you at prayer meeting. It's good to be part of the family of God. Number 23. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Number 32, number 32, I don't know if you'll know this or not. What sins are you talking about? Who knows this one? All right, a few of us, all right? So this is going to be choir practice for some of us. We'll sing it through a couple times. Number 32, if you do read notes or know what they mean, open your book. That'll help you, all right? Here we go. I remember the day when I was bent low with the burden of sin and strife. Then Jesus came in and rescued me, and he gave me a brand new life. And now as I thank him day after day for washing my Yeah. 
first time ever singing that, raise your hand, all right? Doing pretty good for that sake. Let's do it. We'll take that same verse. We'll take the first verse, all right? Here we go. I remember the days when I was bent low with the burden of sin and strife. bulletin would you raise your hand and why don't you just be seated and we're going to sing one more song brother carlos if you'd come uh grab brother charlie's mic there brother charlie is up in new york and uh preaching a youth rally there and uh, we'll be praying for him tonight 254 miss Ange, his name is wonderful and i know we have um words for our spanish uh, on the screens for this one, but 254, his name is wonderful. Raise your hand if you need a prayer bulletin, all right? Let's sing this. Is this the one we have, brother, uh, split screen for? Yep. Just keep your hands up if you need a prayer bulletin. The guys will get to you. We good, brother Brad? His name is wonderful. Let's sing it. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His Let's sing that through and then we'll take our prayer request. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, he is the mighty King, master of everything. need a prayer bulletin. Raise your hand if you do. Alguien necesita un boletín para las oraciones, por favor, levante su mano. All right, we're looking forward to tonight's service. Okay, vamos a iniciar nuestro servicio. As I mentioned, pray for brother Charlie. Antes de mencionar también para que oren por el pastor Charlie. He is preaching a youth conference up in New York State. 
Él estaba predicando la conferencia de jóvenes en New York State. Okay. Pastor, do you have anything to add to the prayer bulletins? Who has a prayer promise? A verse from scripture that encourages you to pray. Hay un verso en el folleto de promesa que queremos que usted aprenda el versículo que está allí. And you don't mind sharing it. Y si tú no no te importa poder compartir. Justin Call unto me and I will answer thee. Llama y yo te responderé. And show thee great and mighty things. Y yo te enseñaré las cosas uh, grandes. Which thou knowest not. Que todavía no has visto. Who else? Prayer promise. Pro a promise from the word of God. Yes, sir, Brian. The righteous crieth and the Lord heareth. You got that one? I know. We're... I can't say it in Spanish either. Don't worry about it. But uh, praise the Lord for that. How about someone from the Spanish department? Anybody at all? A, a, prayer, a prayer verse that you like? Yes, ma'am. There you go. Praise the Lord. Same one Justin said. Which is what? I, I don't, call unto me and I will answer thee. Amen. There we go. Praise the Lord for that. Who else? Prayer promise. Yes, sir. Jason. Luke, Luke 18, 1 meant ought always to pray and not to faint. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Brother Jerome. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Yes, sir. Anybody else? We'll take one more. Uno más. Yes, sir. Able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And so uh, let's go to prayer. Uh, we've got a few things that we're praying about. Obviously, we're praying for the Christmas activities of the next few weeks. Vamos a iniciar con las peticiones de oración, pero también hacerles recordar que tenemos que orar por las actividades de Christmas. Tomorrow night and Saturday night, we'll be singing in Berlin and Berlin Township. Mañana estaremos cantando en Berlín en el Township. Then we have the Spanish Christmas concert. Y también tenemos el concierto eh, de español. And the English Christmas concert. El, el concierto también de inglés. The Christian school play. También la obra de la escuela. And then a birthday party for Jesus, for the bus ministry. Y también vamos a tener el, el, el cumpleaños de Jesús en el ministerio de bases. So let's pray that many people accept Christ. Y oremos para que muchas personas acepten a Cristo. This Christmas season. En este uh, uh, tiempo de Navidad. Please pray for those who are sick. Por favor pedimos que oren por los enfermos. Many people dealing with cancer. Muchas personas están lidiando con el cáncer. And other serious illnesses. Y algunos otros serios uh, problemas. How many of you have a loved one that you're praying for that they'll receive Christ? ¿Cuántos de ustedes están orando por aquellas personas que han recibido a Cristo? Put your hand up. Ponga su mano arriba. Yeah. Let, let's pray for them tonight. Vamos a orar por eso esta noche. Who would have an unspoken request? Maybe, sometimes we'll ask for prayer requests, but something that you don't mention here tonight, but something that's on your heart that you're praying about. Would you lift your hand? God sees that. También, si usted quiere orar por algo que usted tiene en su corazón para poder orar, levante su mano. Pray, if you would, for the voices of the singers for these two concerts. Por favor, también pedimos que oren por los hermanos que van a cantar durante los conciertos para que... Bien su voz. There's a lot of sickness going on. A muchas personas que se están enfermando, hay muchas enfermedades respiratorias, entonces por favor oren por ellos. Pray that we would be healthy. Y que todos estén sanos para ese tiempo. Let's pray for the situation in Israel. También podemos orar por la situación que está viviendo Israel. Pray for revival in America. Por favor orar por avivamiento en América, en Estados Unidos. Revival in our churches. Un avivamiento en nuestras iglesias. Let's pray for those who have a child or a loved one that is not walking with God like they ought to be. Por favor, también eh, pedimos eh, que oren por uh, aquellos hermanos que tienen hijos
que eh, no están caminando uh, con el, en el camino del Señor, eh, que Dios los ayude. And then for the blessing on God's word tonight. Y también para que Dios pueda bendecir la palabra en esta noche. So the ladies will play on the instruments. The altar is open. If we could have some men come and pray at the altar. If you want to pray by yourself, that's fine. Or with a friend, that's fine. Va a estar tocando el piano, pero si usted quiere venir y orar aquí al altar, está abierto el altar. O si usted quiere quedarse allí en su lugar, también puede hacerlo. Please pray for Brother Charlie at Walker Bible Baptist Church. Please pray for the expecting mothers in our church. Please pray for the finances of our church families. 
and for our church in general that God would meet, meet our needs. two of our men pray from the Spanish ministry, Brother Juan Carlos and then Brother Joe Miller. And uh, as we're finishing up in prayer, I'm going to have each of these men pray. Amantísimo Padre, te damos la honra y la gloria, Señor, a ti, Señor, por, por estar reunido, Señor, y poder estar aquí, Señor, adorándote, Señor, en esta noche. Queremos, Señor, hacer esta oración de manera general toda la iglesia, Señor, por nuestras comunidades, Señor, alrededor, Señor, localmente de Berlín, Lindenwald, Señor, Sommer, Clementon, Señor, todas las ciudades alrededor aquí que necesitan por nuestra iglesia, Señor, por las enfermedades, Señor, de nuestros hermanos. Te damos gracias por nuestros pastores. Te damos gracias, Señor, por gente, Señor, que está lista, Señor, a seguir orando, Señor, por nuestras iglesias, llevando, Señor, nuestros ministerios, Señor. Gracias por líderes de nuestras iglesias locales, Señor. Ahora te rogamos que te quedes con nosotros, Señor, y que nos hables en esta noche, Señor. No nos permita, Señor, que nos vayamos vacíos de este lugar, Señor, y cuando nos despidamos, Señor, que siempre, Señor, camines con nosotros. Te lo rogamos en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. My Father, we do love you. And God, we thank you for being good to us. God, thank you for the opportunity to pray. God, we thank you that we can call you Father, that you hear us when we pray. God, that you're interested in our prayers. And uh, Lord, we uh, pray that you would, God, take these prayers, Lord God, and do something with them now, Lord. There's a lot of needs, a lot of hurts. Got a lot of people with illness, and uh, Father, I pray that you'd meet all those needs, God, according to your will, but God, please also be merciful. Lord, those with cancer tonight, God, I pray, oh God, please be merciful. God, do a work that only you can do, God. We'll be sure to give you the glory either way, but God, it sure would be nice, God, to see uh, some folks get some help. I pray that you'd strengthen and encourage our church, your family, and God, I pray that you would protect us, Lord. A lot of things are going to happen here this next couple weeks, and Father, we want to do everything to give you glory and honor. And I pray that you would be in the midst of everything, God, all the small things, all the big things. God, that everything would be done in decency and in order. God, that you would get glory. And Father, I pray that you protect us. God, use this time for us to be able to reach someone for you.
Lord, I pray, God, that as we, God, go around this, around shopping or inviting people to church and the music and the plays, that, God, someone would come to know you as Savior. Yes. God, we pray, Lord, be with our pastors. Lord, I pray that you protect them tonight where they are. Fill them with your spirit. Use them. And God, bless everything that's going on tonight, God, please. We need you, Father. I pray that you be with the teaching and the preaching tonight. And, and uh, Lord, that you'd get glory again as we ask it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And thank you, man. I appreciate that. Let's stand if we would. And if you go to a class at this time, you can be dismissed. The teenagers and Spanish church and young people that are going out. We're going to sing 27, number 27. There's something about that name. We'll sing. As those of you slip out to your classes, and then Pastor will come in here. We'll pray for Brother Carlos in the Spanish and those preaching to our young people. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. see you tonight. We're glad that you're here. If you'd get your Bible, you may be seated, and uh, pastor's going to come and bring our lesson for this evening. Well, it's good to be in church tonight. I think with this cold weather, there's some people decided they're not going to come out. They're just going to stay home tonight, but uh, I'm thankful that you're here. I'm thankful we have prayer meeting. Acts chapter number 20, I, uh, I can't remember the last time I was preaching out of Acts. It's it just so many Thursdays, we have other stuff going on. Be praying for our Christmas concert and the choir and the orchestra. And we always have a lot of visitors on that night. And... Uh, you know, I preached on this Sunday, but people get religious around the holidays, and you'll get people out to church that won't come the rest of the year. And pray for the Christmas play. You'll get some grandparents and some uncles and aunts and things to come out and see their family. And uh, again, it's a great opportunity for people to hear the Word of God. So... Thank the Lord for all that. Verse 28, I'm just going to read it because I like it so much. Take heed unto yourselves and all the flock over which the Holy Ghost made you overseers. Paul was preaching to the preachers and he said to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. We're bought with blood. Amen. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Amen. The precious blood of Christ. Amen. And then Paul says this. I know this. After my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Lord, please bless the word of God. Lord, I pray the word of God would speak to us tonight. Lord, I pray these words would... Uh, make an impression on us and uh, that they would mean something for us. We thank you for the Bible. Thank you for each word of God. We think about how you said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So we're thankful we have something in our hand that's eternal, that's everlasting. 
from everlasting to everlasting, just like you are. We love you, God. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm looking at this verse, and it makes me sad. Paul says, after my departing. So he's going to be leaving these men. He's going to be going to Jerusalem. He's going to be put in prison. He's going to be shuffled off to Rome. And on this side of heaven, they're never going to see him again. I've had the privilege of pastoring this church for 42 years. And I don't take that for granted. So many churches, it's like the revolving pastor door. And somebody will be there a year or two years, or I think the average is two and a half years. And uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, the time has just gone by so fast. But Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, the time I'm now ready to be offered, the time of my departure is at hand. Now, I don't feel sick and I don't have a, a premonition that I'm going to die in the pulpit tonight or anything like that. But I do know this, the time of my departure is getting closer. The Wonderland Pier down in Ocean City, when the rides close for the night, the announcer comes on and says, all good things must come to an end. And uh, we, don't, we don't live in this world forever. We don't stay here forever. And I'm not afraid to die. I don't want to die. And two reasons I don't want to die. Number one, I, I don't want to leave my family. The, the idea of being separated from my family just doesn't make me happy at all. And the other thing is that I don't want to stop pastoring this church. So I'm very thankful to God and I'm thankful for all the people that have put up with me all these years. And it's been it's been a dream come true. I'm living the dream. So Paul is predicting the future here and he's getting them ready. He's, he's warning them. And here's what he says. I know this. this. This is what's going to happen. After my departure, when I'm, when I'm gone, when I'm out of here, Grievous wolves will enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So Paul knew that when his leadership was missing and his power and his direction and everything, that there were going to be people that were going to make trouble. And uh, we, we talked about these verses before, but whenever there's a change of command, whenever there's a change of leadership, uh, whether it's in a business or uh, in, in the United States, uh, from one president to another, there's, there's always, there's always a concern there. And there's always, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, dangerous time. So I just want to say this to the church that uh, if, if the Lord took me out of here, I might be here another 10 years. That would break some of your heart to think I got put up with me that long. But if, if, if the Lord would take me out of here this night, this church is built on the word of God. It's not built on me. It's not built on brother child. It's not built on man. And the church needs to go on. The church needs to roll on. And uh, so that's just the way it is. Notice verse 30. Also of your own self shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. We're supposed to be 
disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not supposed to be disciples of men. And as a pastor, the pastor should not be trying to have people following him. But the idea is to have people following the Lord. Look in 3 John, and it's truly, it's been so long, I can't remember how much we covered last time I spoke, and if we covered this and this is review or what. But in 3 John, which we don't hear much about, uh, look at verse number nine. John says, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, here's a man in the church, and I'm strong, I'm sure he's, He's a strong personality and uh, he's an aggressive kind of person. Maybe we'd say an alpha male. And he said, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, priding against it with malicious words, and not content therewith, Neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would and casteth them out of the church. Now, I thank the Lord. I've, I've always been able to be the pastor of the church and haven't had anybody in the church that I've had to contend with and, and uh, somebody that wanted to be somebody. But there are a lot of churches where there will be a personality, somebody in the church, and... They're trying to get people to follow them. Notice back here in Acts chapter 20. To draw away, verse 30, disciples after them. I don't, I don't want people to be following me. I want people to be following the Lord. We need to follow God. This is God's church, amen? Look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, Paul says, and I'll just get to verse 3 because of the time. He says, you are yet carnal, for that wherein there's among you envying and strife and divisions. Envying, strife, and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? For one, while one saith, I am of Paul, another I am of Paulus, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So Paul is talking to this church at Corinth, and they're the most carnal church. And one of their problems is they're men followers. They're men followers. And it's real easy to get caught up into being a man follower. We need to be Christ followers. We need to be God followers. Now, I'm thankful for uh, great men and their ministries, but I'm not a follower of man. I'm a follower of God. And I don't want anybody in this church to be a follower of me because a lot of times, in fact, all the time, men are going to let you down. Men are going to disappoint you. But if you're a follower of God, you're never going to be disappointed. And, and you're never going to be let down. So go back with me to Acts chapter number 20. So because this is the Lord's church and because we follow the Lord, I'm not looking to leave. But when I leave, the church needs to just keep right on rolling and keep on going on. And I have confidence in our leadership that that'll happen. Thank God. But don't you be the one that tries to make trouble or credit. You know, when, when somebody turns over a church to somebody else, they never do it quite the way that other person did. You with me? People, people uh, I, I'm, I'm talking to pastors all the time. I mean, weekly. And people don't leave the church when the old pastor leaves. They leave when the new one comes in because they don't like whatever they're doing different. Now, if different is bad, don't follow them. But different is just different. Every, everybody does things their own way. And I'm not saying, you know, if somebody comes into church and takes it in some 
other direction. I'm not saying go down with the ship, but I'm saying just because different people have different personalities and things, you, you just, you gotta, you gotta stay with them. Does that make sense? I, I, I don't want to give the wrong impression, like, you know, but just because, you know, in churches, it's like, well, we always did it this way. That's the way we always did it. You know, somebody might come in here and do Lord's Supper different days or different times, or I'm talking about things, not doctrinal things, not, you know, going into some contemporary or changing Bibles, but I'm saying, thank God, not everybody's going to do everything like I've done it for 42 years. But a change is not bad unless it's a bad change. All change is not bad. A lot of change is good change. So, amen. I hope that makes sense. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Paul didn't stop at 430. Paul didn't take the weekends off. I don't know exactly what he's talking about here. He could be talking about, remember that I warned you about the things I just told you about. That there are people that will come in and make trouble. Look, hold your finger here for a minute. Look over in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul is getting ready to be martyred. And sadly, people have left him. He says in verse 9, Do your diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. That had to hurt when Demas left. He's, he's one of his key men. In, in another place, he's called my fellow laborer. He says, only Luke is with me. And then he says this, Alexander the coppersmith, verse 14, did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. So go back with me in Acts 20. He warned people that there would be wolves in sheep clothing and people making trouble and you got to stand up to it. So he could be warning them about that, but he's also warning people that there's a judgment day coming and there's, they're going to meet God in eternity and they need to get saved. And that's the way I like to interpret this verse. He said, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He says in verse 19, Though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. Now there's a lot in that verse. I made myself servant unto all. You remember the Lord Jesus, he took the towel and he girded himself. He began to wash the disciples' feet. And he said, I've given you an example. I didn't... I didn't uh, th this, this is not, uh, this is just an example. And the example was to be a servant. So verse 20, unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under law that I might gain them under law. To them that are without law as without law being not without law to God but under the law to Christ that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. Now look at what it's going to say here. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And I know I've said this before, but I want to say it again. We can't save everybody. In fact, we can't save anybody. The Lord's got to save them. Paul said that. He said, one sows and one waters. God gives the increase. Not everybody's going to get saved, but some will. Amen. We can't save everybody, but we can warn everybody. And if they reject it, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting him. So look at the verse. He said, I made all things to all men that by all means save some. So everybody in this room that's saved, there ought to be some fruit in your life. Not just the fruit of the Spirit, which you ought to have, but talking about somebody that you witness to, somebody that you talk to, somebody you pray for, and they got saved. Now, if you can't think of anybody, 
You need to pray. And even if you can think of somebody, you need to pray and ask the Lord to give you fruit and ask the Lord to give you divine appointments. And we need to be about the Lord's business. When Jesus was 12 years old, he said, wished you not, I must be about my father's business. Well, a big part of the father's business is getting people saved. How shall they hear without a preacher? So we need to be that person. So go on back with me to Acts chapter number 20. He says, night and day with tears. Night and day with tears. Turn back with me to Psalm 126. When's the last time you cried for somebody to get saved? Have you ever? Psalm 126. Look at verse 6 with me. He that goeth forth. If you don't go, you won't sow. He that goeth forth and weepeth a broken heart, bearing precious seed, the word of God, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So we need to have a broken heart. We need to care about people. When the Lord saw, saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. When some have compassion, making a difference, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So go back with me to Acts chapter 20. Now, brethren, well, look at verse 31. I'll read it again. I'm sorry. I see, he said, by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Not everybody listened, but some did. He, he was, these men, he, most of these men, he won them to Christ. He was their pastor. He said, now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So what does it mean to commend you to God? It's, it's to give them, give them over to God. I'm, I'm not going to be with you anymore. I'm not going to be here to help you. But you're not on your own. Because you're in God's hands. You know, there's time when you have to give people over to God. Your children, your grandchildren. You know, you can't be in their pocket all their life. There comes a time when you do everything you can and then you have to just let God handle it. Brother Mike tonight, he said, how many people in the room have somebody that's, you know, kind of like the prodigal son or the prodigal daughter. There, there comes a point when you just have to turn it over to the Lord. That doesn't mean you stop loving them or stop praying for them, but they're in God's hands. So he said, I commend you to God and to the word of this grace, which is able to build you up. So what is the word of his grace? It's the word of God. And the word of God edifies us. It builds us up. And to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So we have an inheritance. And we have a heavenly inheritance. It's not a room. My father's house are many mansions, not rooms. Look back in 1 Peter. Chapter number one. What is your inheritance? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. First Peter chapter one, three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again, we're born again, unto a lively hope, a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, Notice verse four, to an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God. God saves us, God keeps us. But we have an inheritance 
that isn't going to fade away. I've had two inheritances in my life and I never got anything out of either one of them. Because by the time I was supposed to get the inheritance, somebody else had already gotten it. But we have an inheritance that's going to be there when you get there. Now let me make this statement and I'm going, not going to preach on it. There's a difference between an inheritance and a reward. I believe, and I say I believe, that everybody will have the same inheritance because it's grace. It's all grace. But not everybody's going to have the same rewards because our rewards are also, it's grace, but it's also works involved. Because when it comes to our, our reward, the judgment seat of Christ, we're judged for our works, what sort they are. So even though everybody has, you know, it isn't like, well, somebody's going to have a big mansion, somebody's going to have a log cabin. I don't want a log cabin in glory, I want a mansion in heaven. But I believe that's all of grace, that's all of God. But I want also, I hope also, the judgment seat of Christ, that the Lord, there'll be a reward there. So go back with me to Acts chapter 20. Now, brethren, verse 32, I commend you to God. And the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. To be sanctified means to be a saint. Now, I know the Catholic Church believes that certain people did certain miracles and they got canonized and now they're saints and you can pray to them. But that's not what a saint is. A saint is somebody that's been born again. Now, you may not live like a saint, you may not feel like a saint, but if you're saved, you are a saint. I'm a saint. Boy, that don't even sound right, does it? Hold your finger and go over to Romans. Romans chapter number one. Verse seven. To all that be in Rome... Beloved of God, called to be saints. Now, Paul is writing this letter to people. You know, I know people write a letter to Santa Claus, but we write our letters to people. We don't write our letters to somebody that's in heaven, somebody that's already died. I mean, you can write one, but they're not going to read it. So he says, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. So look at verse one. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. The word saint means a holy one. It means somebody that has been set aside, somebody that's been separated. Not set aside like a castaway, but somebody that's been saved out of this world and they're set aside for God's service. In the Old Testament, the different furniture and the, the, the uh, objects that they used in the tabernacle and in the temple, they said they were consecrated. They, were, they used the word consecrated. And it means they were holy unto God. You remember the priest on his mitre, he had the words, holiness to the Lord. We are holy ones. And we're not holy because of any good that we do, but because we have the imputed righteousness of Christ. And he makes us holy. I'm not holy because of anything I've ever been able to do in this world. I'm holy because I have all of Christ's righteousness. I have, I'm as, this, this may sound like blasphemy, but we're as holy as he is because he gives us his holiness. Does that make sense? So go back here to the verse, and I never get where I'm trying to go. He said, to all them which are sanctified. So we have a positional sanctification. You say, what does that mean? That means in God's eyes, 
We are absolutely sinless. We're saved from the penalty of sin. Then there's a practical sanctification, the way we live. We're being saved from the power of sin. We're not sinless, but we sin less. And then one day we will have a perfect sanctification because we'll be in a place where there's no sin and we won't have this sinful flesh to deal with. So we will actually, at that point, be totally sanctified. Right now, it's a positional sanctification. Even though I know in my heart I'm not holy, God declares me as holy. When God looks at me, he looks at me as totally sanctified and holy. So Paul says, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. I can look in the eye and say, I never have done anything what I'm doing for the money. People have this idea, all the church wants is your money. And I, don't, I understand why they believe that. And, you know, you go to some churches and there's a lot, a lot of pressure on people to give. Now, we have a certain amount of pressure. We got to pay the bills. The, the economy's not great right now. Uh, inflation, there's all kinds of stuff going on. And the church has to survive just like you had to survive. But Paul, listen, Paul did not, what word would you call it? Smooch people, not smooch. What do you do when you try to smooth people? He didn't, try to, he didn't try to butter them up. He didn't, listen, he didn't try to use people. He didn't try to use people. He didn't, he didn't go after people because they had money. He didn't, he didn't treat them any, any different because they had money. I'm getting a call from the Philippines if anybody hears that ringing. And uh, somebody over there, I get Betsy up here to talk Filipino for me. Tagala. Anyway, um, I've coveted, look at verse 33. I've coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Jesus said, beware of covetousness. One of the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt not covet. So we don't, we don't want to be greedy. We don't want to be money hungry. We don't want something that doesn't belong to us that wouldn't be good for us to have. He said, yea, ye yourselves know these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. Now, Paul didn't go on deputation. I'm not against deputation. People starting churches. We've got somebody here in the Philippines Obviously, uh, there, there's somebody uh, helping them and, and uh, taking them on for support and stuff like that. I'm not against that, but Paul didn't do it that way. He made tents. He, uh, he, made, he made tents. Aquila and Priscilla were tent makers, and he worked with, their, with his hands. When we started this church, I did construction for eight years. And the reason I did that was because I knew nobody was going to support me. So I, I didn't have a choice. So it's good to work with your hands, amen? Uh, Hard-working people. I was in the construction, it was hard work, and I liked it, and it was good. He said, I've, I didn't covet anybody's money. He said, I work with my own hands, and I ministered to my own needs, and not only that, but to them that were with me. Not only did he take care of his own needs, but he helped other people with their needs. And that brings us on to verse 35. I've showed you all things that how so laboring you ought to support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, one of my points on Sunday was you don't have to wait till Christmas to be a giver. There's two kind of people in the world, givers and takers. I hope you're a giver. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's better to be a giver. It's more blessed to give than to receive. I like to receive. I like people give me money. It's a great thing. I, um, I get the mail every day. 
And I like it when people put checks in there for the church. It's, it's nothing wrong with, with liking for people to give you stuff. But it's better if you're the giver. And Jesus said that. So if Jesus said it, it must be true. And when he had thus spoken, so he's telling them, listen, he's telling them, don't be a beggar. Uh, work and pay your bills and help people. Look at that word laboring in verse 35. L-A-B-O-U-R-I-N-G. You know how they spell that today? They take the U out of laboring. Think about that. They take you out of laboring. A lot of people want a paycheck, but they don't want to work. If you're getting a paycheck and you're not working, you're a thief. I'll just throw that out there. So, day's pay, day's work for a day's pay, day's pay for a day's work. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and he prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. So they loved their preacher and he loved them. And this was an emotional parting. Emotional parting. Sorry most of all for the words which he spoke that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied, me, accompanied him unto the ship. They didn't, they stayed with him as long as they could. They didn't want to leave him. They, uh, they almost got on, a, stayed on a ship and went with him. Let me read you something. I wrote, I write poems I've never read this one to anybody. Um, this is a long time ago I wrote this. I got one remembering Texas. I've been gone from Texas for many years, but thinking about it still moves me to tears. The will of God caused me and Texas to part, but didn't take Texas out of my heart. The man of God, Brother Roloff was a man of God. He walked in the same steps that Jesus trod. More than a pastor, a prophet was he. When he got done preaching, we all bended the knee. A man of God like him, I've always tried to be and hope some of what he had has rubbed off on me. And this one's the one I'm going to read, my preacher. Corpus Christi was like heaven to me. There all my dreams became reality. I hated to leave, but I had to go. The call of God told me so. In my mind, I still see him, tears running down his face. The prophet of God standing in his place. The altar is filled with sinners repenting. Back then, I never thought of it ending. The day that we leave, he's in the garden, bent low. He straightens, and he straightens and waves as he watches us go. So there's people in your life, love them while you have them. Family members, loved ones, Christians, fellow laborers, Paul and these preachers, there was a great Christian love there. Lord, we thank you for how good you are to us, God. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. If you'd like to come down the altar, come. If you're here tonight and you've never been saved, you need to trust the Lord Jesus as your Savior. You need to call on the name of the Lord. You need to get saved.
I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The Bible says, be faithful unto death and I'll give you a crown of life. Don't even think about turning back. Don't think about quitting on God. Don't quit on church. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. If you have love one for another. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. seated brother Mike's going to give whatever announcements again let me remind you to pray especially for Christmas play the Christmas concert and then again Christmas Eve that's another day when people will come to church when they won't come other times we need to reach everybody we can amen appreciate the lesson for tonight and uh, if you appreciate our pastor say amen I appreciate our pastor I see him getting emotional it makes me get emotional because I know we're not here forever and um, I appreciate him serving here you know you look at these verses in Acts where it talks about you know people trying to have preeminence and that's not what it's about, and not coveting man's silver or gold. I, I've had the opportunity to obviously live in his house and travel with dad, and I just, truth, you know, I've watched him meeting after meeting, preach a revival, and they hand him a check, and he hands it back to him, and just says, just use it for God's work. You know, I had someone call me yesterday, and they are wanting to give their pastor a raise and it's a good thing and they they called me and said what what uh what do your people make what does your pastor make and he said i've been looking it up and studying it and if there's a church like the size of your church he's like i'm, I'm assuming you know according to statistics he's probably making 150 170 five thousand dollars a year and whatever i said I don't think you want to use my dad as a model when you go to your church and you're trying. I'm, I'm just being honest. It's just not who dad is, who pastor is. Um, this church has always been a ministry where the money comes out and, it, and then it goes out to minister to people, you know. And um, again, his last truck, 300,000 miles on it, right? I'll sing at churches and jump in with the pastor to go get something to eat. And I'm thinking, this is pretty nice. And he's like, yeah, I get one every two years. And you know, I've got, they've got a retirement package and all. I'm thinking, that's not the way it is back home, you know. And, and I'm not saying that's wrong. I think it's wonderful. Take care of the man of God. He's served. Every ministry is different. But uh, I just know 
it's not about money. He talk, I laugh because he's like, oh, I get excited about money. And he's talking about money that comes in for the church that we can buy a new bus or support a missionary or all that. You know, it's always been that way. And uh, people giving to God. And so I, I thank the Lord for him. Um, early on when they talked about people wanting to have the preeminence, that made me think of, I'm not the pastor tonight, but remember in John 3 and verse number 30 where John says, he must increase, I must decrease. John was not saying that about himself. He wasn't looking at his own life and saying, boy, God's got to be bigger in my life. What had happened was everybody said, you remember the guy you bore witness of? That's Jesus. Well, he's baptizing people and everybody's following him, right? And they're like, they had a problem that people were following Jesus and not John. And that's why John said, oh, you guys are missing it. He's got to get bigger in your life. I've got to get smaller, right? I'm just the man of God. I'm not God. I think for all of us parents and grandparents, you know, that needs to be our prayer for our young people, that they don't just see mom and dad or grandpa or even a pastor, but they see Jesus, they see God, and they do what they do for him. Because when we're not there, right, and they're not in our home, and, and, and we're not in that same role it needs to be God that they're ultimately following, right? And if it's just us, they'll walk away from the Lord. They won't keep doing what they're doing. So for our children, for the people we minister to, our prayer needs to be, he must increase in your eyes. Do what you do for God, and we must decrease. Um, it's not about the man. It's not about the mom. It's not. About, you, you understand? And I just, I was thinking about that tonight, and so... Um, and that's what we're getting there in the book of Acts. But, but I praise the Lord for that. And uh, God is good. I appreciate our pastor and all the years that he's ministered to us. The Lord is good. Are you will meet on Friday night, 7 p.m. Keep are you in prayer. Starting point in the uh, month of, you can get signed up for January classes online. Discipleship, if you're interested, see Brother Chad Buley. Team witnessing, we'll meet at 10 a.m. in the gym. That's the next time we'll meet. Okay. December schedules are in the back. Just so there's no confusion, on Christmas Day, there's a 10.30 service and a 5.30 service, okay? Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve day, all right? The 20, I don't want to confuse you, just said we had church on Christmas. Christmas Eve day, 10.30 and 5.30. We don't have Sunday school that day because we're going to have many of our workers and Sunday school teachers will go out on the buses and bring everybody in for that 10, 1030 service. Does that make sense? So a lot of our drivers and all will be, be serving in the bus ministry in the morning. So 1030 and 530. And then New Year's Eve, okay, 1030, a brunch, and then a service right afterwards at 130. And that's the two big services. That's on that information. Tomorrow night, Berlin Township Live Nativity. It's inside in the Berlin Township Municipal Building, which is, you were going 73, Super Wawa's on the right-hand side, just past there on the right-hand side. Now, we need children, teens, and adults that will sing Christmas carols. Sometimes we go, oh, we're going to have a Christmas choir, and you go, I'm not choir material. All we need is people who know Silent Night, Joy to the World, Jingle Bells, whatever, and you can sing that. We'll hand you books. It's inside. You won't be freezing. And we need some folks that will sing. So far, and I know this is not who we have, but we have zero signed up. All right? So we need you to sign up, if you would, or see Brother Jason. Are you here, Brother Jason? You're in the room. And uh, right back there, or myself. If you can, we always talk about, hey, they're kicking Christ out of Christmas, right? We have a chance to get up there and sing songs about the Lord tomorrow night. And you don't have to be a great singer. They'll literally hand you a book. You get up there. And that's going to be at uh, what time tomorrow night, Brother Jason? I'll get my glasses on. Berlin Township, 6 p.m., right? 6 p.m. tomorrow night. And then Saturday night, right here in the center of town, children, teens, and college students, 530, all right? For this one, oh, I'm sorry. So Saturday night, no one has signed up. Tomorrow night, I've got good news. We had one person sign up, all right? So we have one for tomorrow night. It's a solo, all right? And, uh, and then Saturday, no one. And I don't think that means no one is coming. That just means you haven't signed up. So if you would, and uh, the young people will meet here, teens, college students, 445, run through their songs, 
and then um, it's going to be center of town at 5.30. All right, got that? So Berlin Township, tomorrow night, Friday, center of town, Saturday. Get signed up if you can help with any of these. All right, Jay. Okay. So where it says 6 p.m., come at 6.30? Okay, 6.30 if you can sing at Berlin Township. Again, you'd help us if you just let us know if you can do that, all right? And again, even if you're not a good singer, come on. It's inside, so if it's hot or cold or whatever it is, you'll be fine with that, okay? God is good. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord, good to pray together and uh, hear the Word of God taught. Keep Brother Charlie in prayer. They'll have that conference through tomorrow night, I guess, and uh, be praying for them that the Lord would meet with them all right, and God bless you. We've got a lot of sick folks um, just under the weather, you know, and then some with serious illness. Keep each other in your prayers, all right, and the Lord is good. So let's sing uh, just a song as we go. What do you want to do? You got anything? What do you got? Joy to the world, really? All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. Let's stand together. We'll sing it. Don't tell Brother Charlie. Is it December 1? Oh, I'm really in trouble. All right, I, I'm, do not, do not tell him. I, I will be excommunicated all right we got words up there you should know it joy to the world the lord is come let earth receive her king let every heart prepare him best part ever and heaven and nature i love it all right and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven and nature Thank you for being here. God bless you. You're dismissed. Have a wonderful night.